And today, as we uh, land this series, this uh, Promise Fulfilled, we've been talking about that for the past uh, three weeks, and this is the fourth week, uh, I would like us to somehow fill in the blank that we really, really, really need to know and understand. Christmas is blank. Christmas is blank. And you know what? When you try to... Um, when you try to ask this question, post it in your Facebook, post it in your Twitter, put it in like I said, Instagram, um, you might get some, or maybe if you would try to ask 10 or 100 people in the streets, you might get uh, at least 10 or maybe 100 different, different uh, answers to this fill in the blank. That Christmas is this, Christmas is that. Maybe some of you, you will receive a theological answer, philosophical answer. Or maybe some of you will receive a happy answer. Maybe for some of you, you will receive what? A sad or depressing answer. But here's the thing. We're going to look at the character uh, in the Bible named Simeon. And he's one of the people who has experienced Christmas. And we will see how he has filled in the blank. That Christmas is. And we thought that last week when Pastor Job, when Job talked about the angels, the shepherds, and all of these things, we thought, you know, end the Christmas story, okay? We thought that the, the Christmas story ended in the manger, okay? And when the wise men, okay, you know the names of the wise men? Melchor, Baltasar, at Gawagawaya. But the. It's not even three, okay? This, the, the scripture is clear. That they are wise men, okay? Uh, we thought that uh, the Christmas story ended there. But I would like to submit to you today that the Christmas story didn't end in the manger. But I believe the Christmas story is still timely and timeless, that it still resonates to each and everyone's heart, especially for those people who has received the Lord Jesus Christ and surrendered their lives unto Him. And maybe for some of you here, you, you have never done that yet. Or maybe at one point in your life, you felt like you have backslidden in your, in your walk with God. I believe that the Christmas story still resonates to you because it speaks hope. It speaks life. And it speaks faith. And my prayer that even as we look at the life of Simeon, we will look how Simeon somehow experienced his own Christmas. And I hope that you will also experience that Christmas that Simeon experience. If you have your Bibles with you, please open it to Luke chapter chapter 2, okay? So we, would, we love doing this. We want to open our Bibles in the 5 p.m. service. So if you don't have your Bible, just pretend that you have one, okay? You kulang kayo, ganon, okay? So if you have your Bibles with you, open it to Luke chapter 2. I'll be reading verse 25 until 32. I'll be reading in the ESV version. Ang sabi namin dito, essential sa victory, Okay? Or English, English Standard Version. I'll be reading in verse 25 until 32. It's here, okay. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was a righteous and devout man, waiting for the consolation, or in another translation, comfort, of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. We're going to talk about that in a short while. And it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So you would see that in the story, you know, the Lord spoke to him, he will not die until he see Jesus Christ, okay? And he came in the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, this is the song or this is the prophetic word of, of Simeon. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Let's pray. Lord. You said in your word that you are God, Emmanuel, meaning you are God with us today. It's still true then, it's still true now. Thank you that even as we have heard and read the word, thank you that you are right now speaking to our hearts. So whatever God stress, whatever thinking, mindset that we are, that's blocking your word, that your voice right now in our, in our hearts, thank you God that you are removing and silencing it 
and you are ministering today to the hearts of each and every one here in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen, amen, amen. Uh, a while ago, we, we just read something about the customary or custom law uh, or, yeah, the, the law that they do. The reason why, just to give you a background, no? back at the dawn, or why Joseph and Mary were in, was in the temple and Simeon went in there as well, it's because in their, cost, uh, in their customary law, uh, whenever a mother gives birth, okay, there is a law that tells the mother to go to the temple and do the cleansing uh, ritual, okay? There's a cleansing ritual. That's why they have to go to the temple. And of course, at the eighth day, that's the day wherein they give the name, of the baby, which according to the prophetic word, and they have uh, adhered to the prophetic word, Mary and Joseph will name the baby Joseph. No, just kidding. J Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Jesus. Okay. And now we will go to the character of Simeon. This is somehow a very interesting so story because if you would read the Christmas story, parang, huh, where is he in the Christmas story? But we would realize that even Simeon, by the grace of God, experienced a Christmas that changed his life. It says there, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and he was a righteous and devout, meaning this guy has been following God, okay? Maybe according, there's, there's no Jesus yet, no Savior yet at this point, but he is maybe following the law. He's, he's continually going to the temple. He's consistent according to look there, waiting for the consolation there. So there is a portion in his life that he says, Wow! I'm waiting for the promise of God. Who among you here, you've been waiting for the promise of God in your life. There's a point in your life where, where you've waited, okay? For the single people, you have been waiting, okay? Lord Jesus, Pasko na, okay, Lord. Ano ba, okay? I'm, I'm, I have a deadline, okay? So maybe that, that's the thing that you're waiting for. Or maybe some of you are still waiting for your Christmas bonus, okay? Or you're waiting for something very, very important. But this person, a righteous and devout, devout person, is waiting for the promise of God, which will be the comfort for Israel. And later on, we'll see what does that mean. But I would like to highlight this. That, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. When I was reading this, it wasn't mentioned by Luke. Luke was the one writing this. And it wasn't mentioned by Luke how long. How long was Simeon uh, was waiting? Uh, was it 10 years? Was it one year? Okay. Masakit ba ang one year? Is, it, is that painful? Two years maybe? Maybe five? Uh, it doesn't say if this guy is a, an old man or middle-aged man, okay, or maybe in his young, younger years. It doesn't say. Uh, it doesn't even say what, what, what background he has, but he's just defined as a righteous and devout person. And he has, he has been waiting for the promise of God. But this is his distinction. He is filled and he, the Holy Spirit is with this person. Here's, here's the thing that I have realized here. More than just us claiming the promise. And you know what? You know, sometimes we as preachers, we, we, we want to inspire you, encourage you. Come on, you claim the promise of God. Come on. You read the scripture. You love God's word and claim it. Claim that God will heal your family. Who among you, you like that? Okay, who, who among you, you want that? Claim that God will provide for you and that is really true. Claim that all of these things are true according to Jesus Christ. They are yes and amen in Christ. We would love to say that and that is really true. We uphold the scripture and we will want to inspire you to hold on. What can be bitaw, okay? Tell your neighbor, friend, what can be bitaw, okay? Okay, sabi mo, okay, friend, don't let go, okay? Don't let, English pala tayo, 5 p.m. service, English service, okay? Sorry, I'll translate na lang for the internationals. But, <laughs> but it's another, the reason why Simeon held on. I don't know how long, but he held on. The reason why he held on is because of the Holy Spirit in him. And I believe my prayer for you today is this. Whatever promises of God that you're holding on today, maybe, maybe Simeon in his lifetime has seen some discouragement has seen some uh, maybe it won't work maybe I, I will I will die not seeing the promises of God but one one distinct thing that that the author looks said there is that he is filled and he, the Holy Spirit is with him and my prayer is this more than just us believing and the faith that we have in terms of the promises of God my prayer is that we will always be filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's only through the Holy Spirit that we can cling on, hold on strongly 
to the promises of God. I pray that God Himself, God Himself, the Holy Spirit will fill you and convince you every single day that you know what? Sometimes, sometimes my encouragement as a pastor or your leader's encouragement in a victory group, who among you here, you're part of a victory group? Konti lang. But if you're, who among you, you're happy you're part of a victory group? Okay, konti. Okay, so. Sometimes your, leader will, your leaders will inspire you. Those are good. But when, that, when, when push comes to so, shove and when the rubber meets the road and you, you're having a tough time, my prayer is that every single day as a believer, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened to Simeon. And when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he saw things differently. It says there, and he had been revealed to him let me just underline that, revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. You know, it's one thing that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's, one, it's another thing that you keep on walking in the Spirit of God and you see things and you receive and you hear from the Lord. Elmo, you know, as a pastor, this is one, one thing that I always pray for, for every one of you. Whether you're attending this congregation or you're coming from another service, or basta, you're here, you're listening, you're online. My prayer is that you will not just hear us, but you will hear the voice of God. You will not just hear a pastor, or you will not just read the scripture. This is, I mean, I believe the scripture, the word of God will change your heart. I believe that, and that is really true. But you know what? God's voice is available for you and for me today. And there's a lot of things that somehow, you know, in your life, there's a lot of stress, a lot, a lot of disturbance that causes you to somehow be deaf from the voice of God. And my prayers is that God will change that, that God will remove all of the blinders and all of those things that deafens us from the voice of God. Because when Simeon heard the Lord, he cling. He said, I will not let go. I will take that. I will not die. Until I see the Lord's Jesus Christ. You know what? He saw things. You know, he's, I'm not sure, no? Parang, I'm thinking Simeon, when I was reading uh, this story, I mean, his, his, this, his story is just, you know, how many verses, okay? And there's no background. There's nothing there that you can see about what he has been asking God or what. But it seems like, I feel like maybe at one point he asked for food. He asked for what? Um good relationship, he asked for this, promotion, whatnot. Maybe he asked that, but you know what? What he has been clinging on and what he felt like his life fulfillment is, is not anymore found because he has been walking with the Holy Spirit, because he has been filled with God. He felt like life satisfaction is not anymore found in this world, but is found in Christ. I would like to say this, that life fulfillment this is what happened to Simeon, and I hope it will happen to you. It's found on the eternal, not on the temporal. That life's fulfillment is found on the eternal, not on the temporal. You know what? My, my prayer is this. Um, later, we will have a celebration. Yeah? We will be filled with food. Who among you, you want to be filled with food? Okay? Lechon, maling. Man, nakapasok yung maling. Oh. Ham-ham. Okay? Uh, kangkong. but may kangkong, di ba? Parang... Uh, you know, you will be filled with food. You will be filled with songs. My way, bidyoke, di ba? Yung mga ganon, blue bayou. I'm coming back someday. Yung mga, ano, mga titas of Manila. Okay? So, you will be filled with celebratory spirit. But my prayer for you is this. And I hope that when you walk out of this room, you will be filled with the spirit. And you will be filled and so satisfied by the Spirit that you see things in a different light. That, imagine na lang, this is a gift. Okay. You will receive a gift later. I pray that you will enjoy it. But my prayer is that you will not let this gift that you will receive to be the basis of your satisfaction. But let God, Jesus Christ, the eternal being that became flesh dwelt among us, just like you, just like me, so that he will save mankind. I pray that he will be the only source of your satisfaction 
Simeon had that. Simeon had that experience. My prayer is that you will have that as well. When you go out of this room, celebrate with your family members, I pray that you will be filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he came. Sabi niya don. He came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus Christ to do to him, for him, according to the custom of the law, okay? So they went to the temple. He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, and then the, the prophetic word came in. But when I was looking at this, Simeon was led by the Spirit to go into the temple. Okay, that's good. Okay, Simeon now go to the temple. Okay, but do you know that in that temple, there are a lot of parents there, you know, with, with their child being dedicated. And I was thinking, how did Simeon recognize that that boy or that child is Jesus Christ? I was thinking, baka parang ano, di ba? he was being led by the Spirit. Okay, okay Simeon, kumaliwa ka. Turn left, okay? Okay, turn left. Okay, you will see there two couples, one with a baby girl, with one with a baby boy. Hindi yon. Okay, so para, all right. So Lord, and then I don't know what happened to him, but I don't know because you know at that at their time there's no name tag. Okay, I don't I, I don't know if there was a name tag there that would say this is baby Jesus. Okay, I'm Mary Joseph. I don't think there was a name tag for for but for some reason. Because he is walking with the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. Simeon recognized the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's my hope for everyone. We will celebrate later. We will be celebrating a lot of good things. And maybe for some of you, might not be celebrating too much. Maybe your situation is a bit discouraging or depressing, wherever you are. My prayer is this, you would see Christ. Do we see Christ this Christmas? Maybe for some of you, this Christmas has magnified a lot of things that is lacking in your life. My prayer is that when you see the lack, you would see Christ in that lack. Whether that lack is, you're saying, God, I still don't have a spouse. I pray that you would see Christ who is the lover of your soul. I pray that whenever you sense and feel like your, your, your family is not restored at this point, I pray that you would see Christ as the restorer and the builder of your family. Christ is with you. Christ is God, Emmanuel. And maybe for some of you, you felt like you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you have no uh, finances and you are down in your, in your, in your finances. I, I pray that you would see Christ, the ultimate provider and meaning of your life, wherever, whatever lack you have right now, I pray that you would see Christ. Simeon saw Christ. Nobody told him that that was baby Jesus. Who would have known? Yet because of the Holy Spirit, he recognized Christ. Do we see Christ in every situation of our life? Then he prophesied this one. He said this, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. I don't know about you. When, when he saw the fulfillment of the promise of God in his life, there was peace. There was peace. There was peace in your heart. And my prayer for you is this, that you will have this peace that transcends all understanding. That you will have this peace that, you know what? I know for many of us, we're trying to find meaning. We're trying to find purpose. We're trying to find significance. And, and security in our lives so that we will have peaceful lives. We want to be, we want to have a peaceful life, a peaceful family, a peaceful career, a peaceful love life. The world can, can just give you a bit of that, but the, the totality and the fullness of that is only found in the Prince of Peace, the founder of peace. When Isaiah 9 6 was written, it was said there, and he will be called Prince of Peace. It's not because the prince na principe, okay? Uh, na, ah, oh, kasi mayroong king of peace. No, no, no. Prince there meant principal, okay? Meaning he is the source of peace. The question is this, who is the source of your peace? The question is, as we celebrate this Christmas, and I'd like to say this as well, even as this Christmas will pass, who will be the source of your peace? I pray that Jesus will be the source of your peace. I would like to end with this last, last few verses 
of the prophetic word of, of, of Simeon. It says there, For my, eye, my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to the people, to your people, Israel. Uh, this is actually a prophetic word of, of, of Simeon saying that Jesus will not just save Israel. Although in their context, they're saying, you know, the Lord, the Messiah will come so that he will make the nation Israel great again, glorious again. But it seems like the Spirit of God led him to say this, that the salvation that Jesus is about to give is not just for the Jewish people. It's also for the Filipinos, for the Japanese, for the Koreans, Africans, Americans, Australians, for the whole world. For every single person who will live, the gift of eternal life will be extended to every single one because of this child, Jesus Christ. When I was younger, when I, I, I always see the Christmas story as, or the Christmas season as a very, you know, a joyful event, you know, who among here favorite in Christmas, right? Uh, because it's, it's filled with a lot of generosity, a lot of, and you know, the sense of because God gave we, gave, we give as well. And that's how I understood for the longest time what Christmas is all about. But last year was a different one. I believe God redefined what Christmas is for me. Last year, December 22nd, around 8 a.m., I received a call. And I received a call from my niece, okay? Niece. Not niece, but pamangkin na ano, babae. Tama ba? Lalaki nephew, okay? Just to clarify, okay? And she mentioned to me, Tito, Lola is gone. She's, she's now dead, okay? Just to give you a background, she has been uh, hospitalized for a month and then after a short while, she, um, she went out of the hospital with may mga complications ba, but she deter- her life deteriorated along the way. So we have to house, uh, they, they, I mean, she... Uh, lived in a house with my uh, two pamangkins and then Dece- December 22nd she passed away so I drove I drove that was your car Fidel thank you for uh, lending me that car so hinarurot ko may, na- may nabangga nga ako eh no, just kidding I'm just kidding so I, I, I drove to the house where my uh, mom is and I, I saw her in that room lifeless and I touched her hand it was cold but I believe the Spirit of God spoke to me and at that point, he, he told me, she's not there anymore. She's with the Lord. She's not there anymore. She's with the Lord. And at that point, it gave me peace. Because I have seen in my eyes, and when I saw what Simeon said there, I have seen in my eyes the salvation of my mom. That when he died, I knew in my heart and I knew by faith according to what the scripture says, she's with the Lord. And it dawned on me, that is what Christmas is all about. Christmas came, Christmas happened so that you and I will be saved. So that you and I will experience life eternal. That you and I will experience a meaningful and purposeful life. That if we receive Him, that if we trust Him, if we put our whole life in Him, the Lord is saying, I will catch you. I will redeem you. I will change your life. I will change your life from death to life. I will give you everything that I have. I realized that's what Christmas is all about. When I saw my lifeless mom at that point, Christmas change. It became this. It's about the salvation of given by God to mankind. It's a salvation that given by God to mankind. It's good. Later on, you will give gifts because God gave His Son. It's good that later on, you will be together, reunion, because God reconciled man and God. But it's also great to remember He came full of grace full of truth so that you and I will have an opportunity to know Him, be saved by Him. And you know, if you have been a follower of Christ, that is true. We can bank on that with full faith and full trust, knowing that God, 
That's it. It's settled. But my prayer for some of you here, maybe it's not yet settled for you. My prayer is that you will have an opportunity today. This will, this will be your first Christmas, a real one. One that is founded not on celebrations, not on parties, not on gift giving, but founded in Christ. Christmas is about the salvation given by God. Let's all stand up. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to call right now the, the music team to, I just felt like this is a good moment for us to just take this time to just adore God, worship God for the next few minutes. But for many of you here, uh, there's a lot of things happening in your life and I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will fill you, give you a new perspective, give you a new strength, give you a, give you a, a new life. I pray that God will open up your eyes and you will hear His voice as well. With all eyes closed, heads bowed down. I want to pray for some of you here, if not, maybe all of you. If you want, if you need to be filled again with the Holy Spirit and be strengthened once again with the Holy Spirit, I would like, I'd like to pray for you right now. Pray for you right now. If that is you, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be restrain, have strength again by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this hands. Thank you, Lord, for these hands. Thank you, Lord, that you are right now here. Today, today, you will touch them. Today, you will feel them. Today, God, Lord, as they uh, raise their hands up high, thank you, God, that you're removing the blinders and even the things that are been that has been that has been stopping them to hear from you, God. Lord, thank you that you are doing this today. Today, God, no hurts, no offense, God, no nothing in the past can 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 stop them from experiencing you, the real Christmas in their lives, God. Lord, thank you, God, that from this point on, they will walk by the Spirit. From this point on, God, they will experience you in another level of intimacy, God, that this is not just for the Christmas season, but for every single day of our lives. Let's worship God. Let us adore
God, you're worthy. You're worthy. And as we celebrate later, in that dining table later, God, we just want to say, you are worthy. We honor you. Glorify you, God. I just felt like doing this call at this point because God desires everyone to know Him and to come to Him. If this is you, you're saying, wala pa akong relasyon kay Lord. I have no relationship with Jesus Christ. I know I am a sinner. I know there's something wrong with my life. I have never made that decision before. And right now, this is your chance. This is your moment. You want to make this decision to make Him your Lord, your Savior. Siya ang gagawin mong Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Na siya lang iyong pag-asa. He's the only hope and the only, the only strength in your life. If that is you with all heads bowed down, eyes closed, I would like to I would like to ask some people to please raise their hands if you're making that decision. Thank you for that hand. I acknowledge that hand. Thank you for that hand. I see that hand as well. Another hand. Over. Another hand as well. Okay. I would like to invite, you know, this is not to put shame or, you know, this is actually to encourage everyone. We, we would want to stand with you and pray with you. If you are making this decision today, uh, maybe some of you did not raise your hand, but you want to make this decision. I would like to invite everyone who, who wants to make that decision to come in front. And we want to pray for you. The leaders here, the victory group leaders, the pastors, campus missionaries will be praying for you here in front. We'd like to invite you. This is your moment with the Lord. This is a family thing. This is a spiritual family. And God would want to invite you to receive this gift. This is the gift of God. Nag expect ka ng regalo? Ito na yan. This is the gift of eternal life that comes from Jesus Christ. I would like to ask for those people who have raised their hands. I would like to encourage them. Sige, samahan nyo na rin po. Samahan nyo na. Kung may kasama kayo, please bring your bags. We would like to pray for you today. Nagkakahiyaan pa talaga, no? It's okay. I would like to invite you to please come in front. We would like to pray for you. Thank 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 you. This is your moment with God. This is your moment with the Lord. And this is how powerful God is. I felt like there's there's some more, but I don't know why. Why did I not get up and come to the Arab? Not at all. But I like to say this uh, in front of everyone here: Merry Christmas. This is one of, if not, this is the best Christmas that you can have because now you would say, Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is the founder of your Christmas. Si Lord na ngayon ang iyong Dios at tagapagliktas. Galing no? Si na ngayon namang uh, maglilinis ng iyong kasalanan. Amazing. You are now. There is now no condemnation according to Christ. There is no guilt, nothing that can stop the love of God to love you. You cannot do anything that will lessen the love of God or to increase the love of, the love of God. But God loves you because He knows you and He loves you. I would just like to pray for you. Just, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for forgiving my sins. I repent from all my sins. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior in my life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation and eternal life that I have today. Thank you, God, for what you're about to do in my life. Thank you, Lord, that you will also use me to share the gospel to other people. Lord, thank you, God. I bless these people who have stood up, raised their hands. Maybe for those people who might be at the back saying, God, I also am doing that. Today, your grace is upon them. Today, Lord, the, the salvation we have seen, 
your salvation that is a light to the Gentile, a light of revelation to the Gentile. And Lord, thank you, God, that you are with us. And this is the fulfillment of your promise to each and every one of us that you want to give us life and life to the full. We bless each and every one. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.